medical school interview season has arrived hey guys it's issy welcome to my channel i hope you're doing well and taking care of yourselves in this lockdown and in this pandemic even though it's just been a year yeah it feels like a lifetime ago since i applied for medicine and that is literally because of how much has changed since last year with the pandemic and everything i know that i was constantly refreshing my emails constantly checking are they going to give me an interview or not thankfully i managed to secure three interviews for graduate medicine and eventually a place doing medicine at the university of warwick so guys you can do it it's possible if you want to know how to prepare for your interviews keep watching first of all what did i use to prepare for the interviews i used this book the medical school interviews isc medical school interview prep book um i really like this book because like they just had like a load of practice questions and he went into detail about how to structure your answers and things like that so yeah i really like that um i've put the link down below i think it's like i don't know you can get it second hand but i think i bought it for like 17 pounds i'm not too sure about the price and in terms of free resources um we are medics have this free interview guide and they also have like a free self-service mock interview thing and honestly i didn't use it myself um i think it's something they came up with this year but it looks amazing like i've heard such good things about it and you should definitely check it out if you like what you're hearing don't forget to like subscribe and turn on your notifications and if you have any questions about the interviews or if there's anything you want me to talk about in particular in the future drop it in the comments below let's get started so my first tip is like really get to know yourself and understand your motivation for doing medicine this is because a lot of us worry that because we didn't have this wow moment that we're not able to give a, a good answer that's not true you can still give a good why medicine answer even if you didn't have that that click moment if you do want to answer this question just make sure like you're backing it up with reasons why like for example if you saw something in your work experience that really touched you and motivated you and pushed you to want to do it more talk about that or if there's something in particular about medicine that you really like explain that as long as you can give a few points and explain them and back them up with a bit of evidence and like of what you've seen in your experience what you've read then that's a good answer do not worry about this question just make sure you're really sure of yourself and you're able to explain and back up the reasons why you want to do medicine if this means you know like doing mind maps and just like mind maps of your experiences and mind maps of like you know brainstorming your reasons and ideas really understanding that is really going to help you and give you confidence guys practice practice is so key like i cannot stress practice enough like when you practice you just become so much more confident in what you're saying so much more confident in the way you articulate yourself in the interview and like i said in my previous video it's about like getting used to your environment practicing on through a webcam or through like facetime with a friend or someone in your family or someone you know and getting them to give you feedback on how you come across you can learn so much from this i remember last year when i was preparing for my interviews and i literally asked like my mom my siblings my friends to ask me interview questions and honestly i cannot stress enough how useful their feedback was like even saying oh you didn't explain this properly or you could have explained this better or you weren't very clear it like gave me that confidence when it came to like articulating myself in the interview and i also recorded myself too so i'd like you know camera plop it up against like my windowsill and then just talk to myself that way i could actually like look at the way i come across listening to my voice and hearing myself talk all the time actually made me more confident especially with it being online like it's good to get that practice in so you know that your personality and your points come across well on camera i feel like you know the screen can sort of like it's 2d it's flat it kind of sometimes can hide that extra presence so you want to make sure that you're really giving that presence whilst on camera another thing i did when i was preparing was that i sort of made a list of all the different things i've done all the different experiences like societies working all of that and then i'm brainstormed 
like the different skills I'd gotten from there and like try to find like specific examples. And this is because they could ask you, you know, tell me a time where you showed good leadership. Tell me about a time where you worked well in a team. And they could even ask you about your strengths and weaknesses as well. So like, like I said before, this is pulling on from making sure that you really know yourself um, so that you're prepared for all these different questions and you can have you can give specific examples when they ask you about these things another thing is do not learn word for word for your answers don't do this because you could come across very robotic and very unnatural and the thing is the interviewers can see right through that they want a bit of naturalness they want you to be thinking about your answers they want it to come from like your pure mind, your pure heart. They wanna know that you actually believe what you're saying. If you learn word for word and you forget your words, it's gonna be very difficult for you to improvise. Whereas if you're using like points and you have different points in your head that you know you can pull from and explain, that's much better. It's like when you're on stage and you get stage fright and you forget your words, very hard to improvise. So you don't, you don't wanna put yourself in that situation and it's also so much better when you come across natural and what you say is actually believable. As well as this, it's so important that you know your medical ethics. Your four pillars of medical ethics, this is, um, <laughs> I even forgot myself. This is beneficence, autonomy, non-maleficence, and justice. As well as this, know your basic medical laws. This is such things such as informed consent, confidentiality and knowing about the laws regarding competency these are things such as phrasal guidelines to do with consent in children these are so so important when it comes to answering those medical ethics questions this is because it means that you can go through things systematically so okay you've spoken about autonomy now you can speak about non-maleficence now you can speak about beneficence it means that you know that you're covering all grounds when talking about these medical ethics questions learn these ethics like the alphabet it's like it's very, very common that you'll get a medical ethics question, maybe almost guaranteed. Also, make sure you have the background knowledge of the NHS. Know some things about the structure of the NHS, know about, you know, the provision of care. This is really important because they are assuming that you've done the research into what it's like to be a doctor in the UK and where you'll be working. So it's very important that you have some knowledge of the NHS and how it works. And with regards to the NHS, make sure you know about the General Medical Council, the GMC. They are so, so important in guiding the practice of medicine and interviewers are likely to ask you about this. So make sure you know the four roles of the GMC and they have provided the Good Medical Practice Guide, which you probably have seen already. Go have a read of it online. Make sure that you know about the GMC and know about what they do so that when they ask you a question about it in an interview, you can answer and the interviewer will be like, they know what they're talking about. They know what they're doing. They've done their research. It's really important that you know the current affairs related to medicine. This is because it's very likely that you'll get asked about this in your interviews. For instance, like think about it right now, the biggest thing that has affected the globe since I did my interviews last year in November is COVID-19. So I suggest like, you know, learning some things about how COVID-19 has affected the NHS and learning about other top topics in relation to medicine and the NHS. I think that a good place for you to look is on the Medic portal. They have like a whole bank of like, you know, NHS hot topics and current affairs. Last year, I went on to there and learned a few things from there and I quite liked it. So I'll put the link down below and if you like, you can go and check it out. When I was, um, you know, practicing for my interviews, I made sure I learned about the medical history and different scandals that shape the way that we practice medicine today and shape the way that, you know, doctors are revalidated. This is because it's possible that you could get questions about these things. These are things such as the Harold Shipman case and the Mid-Staffordshire NHS Trust scandal, which eventually led to the Francis Report. So just make sure that you learn about these things and you have an understanding of, you know, how they shape the way that we practice medicine today and how they shape the way that, you know, the guidelines are and things like that. In terms of the interview, right, remember to relate things back to you. So if they were to ask you what skills make a good doctor, 
you know, pick about three skills or so that make a good doctor and then mention those, but don't forget to relate it back to yourself. What they're really asking is, do you have the skills to be a good doctor? So when they do ask it, mention the skill and then relate it to yourself whilst also giving a specific example of when you portrayed this skill. It's really important that you relate things back to yourself. You need to remember that the interviewers already know what the skills are, so you shouldn't be simply just listing the skills. They want to know that you have those skills and you can portray them. So always keep it in mind, what does the interviewer want from me? Do not jump straight into the question. Like, it's okay to think. If you're like stuck or anything and they've just asked a question, it's okay to be like, please can I have a moment to think? And best believe they'll give you that. And then you can have a couple of seconds to calm down and think about the question. They're not gonna mark you down for doing this. There's absolutely nothing wrong with looking like you're thinking about a question. It's better to come up with a well thought out answer than jump out and say something that doesn't make any sense or doesn't answer the question. Last but not least, I think it's so important that you be yourself. Like I can't stress this enough. This is because when you're yourself, like you just have this confidence about you. If you're confident in your personality, it means that your answers come across better. And even more importantly, you leave an impression. If you like, I don't know how to explain it, but if you like try and, you know, fit a norm of what you think a medical student should be or what you think a doctor should be in personality wise, then you might end up not being confident in your answers, not being confident in the way you're presenting yourself. And like, you might not end up leaving the impression that you would like to. So I think it's so important that you are yourself, honestly, because they want to get to know you in that short five minutes. What can they get about you that stands out from other people? So you need to remember that, you know what, you're great. Just shine through in the interview with your personality. And that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it helps you like with the interview and with more confidence preparing and going forward. Guys, good luck, like good, good luck with your interviews. And also don't hesitate to leave comments below if you have any questions, if there's anything you want me to talk about in the future, guys. All the best and see you in the next one. Peace out.